Welcome students. This session is for BA second year English literature paper second, that is prose and fiction. In this session, we will continue with this essay by G.K. Chesterton on the pleasures of no longer being very young. Before we continue with the text, let's have a recap of my previous session. In this essay on the pleasures of no longer being very young, Chesterton mentions the failure of modern industrial world. So in my previous session, we talked about uh, this industrial recession of the world and it could have been avoided if people remembered the old lessons given by many proverbs. If people understood the real meaning that proverbs have given us, uh, like history repeats itself and uh, fortune is fickle, so all these proverbs, if people really knew the meaning of uh, these, then uh, this industrial recession would have been avoided. The people uh, did not link the meaning of these proverbs to their current life situation. Uh, and this was the reason perhaps that they did not learn anything from the history and history repeated itself that anything which has a peak does decline at some uh, point of time. This has been proved by the downfall of emperors like Napoleon, Alexander and great Roman, but modern man does not learn anything from these examples. So Chesterton does give example from history. He talks about the emperors like Napoleon, Alexander and the great Roman Empire, but he says that a modern man has learned nothing from history. From the writer, witnessing the economic depression is to see the dead proverbs come alive. So when uh, Chesterton witnesses the economic depression in the world, he sees that all those dead proverbs that history repeats itself uh, and fortune is fickle and wealth sticks over wings and flies at a moment of time, uh, all these dead proverbs, they became alive. That means they got new meaning and uh, writer was able to feel that these proverbs of the past, they still have that relevance in the modern times. He says that old people have the experience of life. Therefore, they can better understand the real meaning of everything. And this, he says that old age has an, exam, has an, uh, has an advantage that uh, uh, they can understand in a better manner the real meaning, the real relevance of everything around because old people uh, have the experience of life. So this is advantage which Chesterton attaches with an old age and he says that young people or modern man was not able to learn anything uh, because they do not have the experience of life and this was the reason why world faced this economic recession. Let's come to the text now. Chesterton writes that this, like so many of the realizations of later life, is quite impossible to convey in words to anybody who has not reached it in this way. So all the advantages that he's talking about, all the experiences that he's talking about, old age, he says it's very difficult to put all these realizations, all these experiences in words to any person who has not reached old age. These realizations of later life, uh, these are impossible to convey in words to anyone because uh, a person who has not reached old age will not be able to visualize, will not be able to find meaning, will not be able to uh, understand what are these advantages of uh, old age are. So it is like a difference of a dimension or plane in which something which the young have long looked at rather wearily as a diagram has suddenly become a solid. And it is a very interesting example over here. He says, uh, for young people, uh, something is like a diagram. And uh, with diagram, we know that we can only know the length and breadth of a certain thing. But in old age, one can see that diagram in the form of solid. That means one can see uh, the three dimension uh, aspect of anything. That means which includes depth. 
so uh, experience with experience old age uh, gives a person an in-depth knowledge of life or anything around so uh, something which young people uh, look at in a very tired manner as a diagram but the same thing when an old person or an experienced person looks at uh, he is able to attach the depth of his understanding to it and that thing becomes a solid for him it is like the indescribable transition from the inorganic to the organic something which is uh, uh, which is just a theory which is just a, a, a an idea in in the youth age suddenly it becomes meaningful suddenly it becomes quite practical when a person uh, achieves old age as if the stone snakes and birds of some ancient egyptian inscription began to leap about like living things and then he compares this understanding to that ancient egyptian inscription which you can say that in uh, youth age it is uh, incomprehensible to young people but when person achieves old age and when that person achieves the experience of life these same inscriptions they began to leap about like living things that means all these things which were meaningless which were incomprehensible in youth age they suddenly find meaning they suddenly start uh, giving a, a a living uh, aspect of uh, of itself the thing was a dead maxim when we were alive with youth so when a person is is in his young age in his youth age all these maxims all these proverbs they appear to him as dead as meaningless as irrelevant it becomes a living maxim when we are nearer to death and look at the paradox that he gives over here that when a person becomes old when he comes nearer to death all these maxims which were uh, dead which were meaningless in uh, youth age they suddenly become living that means suddenly they find meaning in person's life even as we are dying the whole world is coming to life and this is a beautiful phrase written by chesterton over here that as person approaches death he is able to see the life uh, in the world he is able to see the uh, the uh, world is full of life and meaning uh, whereas when one is in the youth age one sees that the life that the world is full of dead maxims and meaningless things and suddenly when a person up, uh, uh, goes and approaches old age the whole world uh, appears to him as full of meaning and uh, practical all the maxims they appear to him practical another paradox is this that it is not the young people who realize the new world the moderns do not realize modernity so uh, it's only when certain thing suddenly changes in front of you then only one can realize the change modern or young people are born in a modern environment or they are born in a new world so they are not able to un- to realize that it is new it's only when a person that has stayed in this world prior to a particular age only then that person is able to see the transition of something or a change that has come in the world so for noticing the change for noticing the modernity or the newness one needs to be before that change in this world so that when the change comes he is able to notice that with his experienced eyes or with his with experience in his life that this is something which did not happen when he was in his youth age uh, so uh, we can say that the moderns are not able to realize modernity uh that young people they are not able to understand that this world is new uh, because they were born in this new world they have never known anything else because old people they have seen world changing they have seen the how life has progressed they have seen the changes in their lifetime but modern they have not known anything else this world is their own background they have stepped on to a moving platform which they hardly know to be moving 
change or movement or progression can be realized by only that person who has been on this platform for a very long time, that means who has uh, experienced the, the age and who has experienced uh, many years, multiple years, uh, only then he is able to see that the world is moving, uh, whereas a person who has newly stepped into this uh, moving world, he is not able to uh, notice the change in, uh, in world or in life. As a man cannot feel the daily movement of the earth, and he uh, compares just as we are not, we know that the earth is moving, but we are not able to feel the daily movement of the earth, but he would feel it sharp enough if the earth suddenly moved the other way. So this is like the change of an age or a change of an era. If a person is uh, there on a moving earth and suddenly earth starts moving in the other direction, a person is able to feel that change. But if a person is uh, staying on this earth or is living in this earth where the earth is moving in one particular direction, one cannot feel the movement of the earth. In the same manner, uh, Chesterton compares this realization of change uh, can be experienced only by the old people because they have seen uh, those times when these things did not exist. That's why they are able to see that life has progressed in such and such manner or the changes have come. The older generation consists of those who do remember a time when the world moved the other way. So we have seen that how old people, they talk about their own time and they say that the world has changed, the things have changed and this is new. So because they were in the world when the things uh, around them in society, in nation or on, on this global level, they used to happen in the other way form. So it is the old people who are able to realize the changes in the world on all the levels. They do feel sharply and clearly the epoch which is beginning. And old people are able to uh, realize this very clearly, very sharply. They are sensitive enough. They have seen, uh, they have experience of uh, life, time. Uh, so they are able to realize it, realize this change very sharply and clearly because they were there before it began. Uh, that's why they are able to see the change and progression. This is the advantage of uh, old age that Chesterton is talking about, that uh, it's the old people who are able to realize the new things that are happening around and they are able to realize the change which is happening around them. Uh, if we just analyze this text that we have done, Chesterton is saying that old people have the experience of old things so they can better understand the difference between the old and the new that we have talked about. That because they have experience of uh, things uh, in their whole life, they are able to understand what is new and what is old. The writer gives an interesting analogy. We cannot feel the rotation of the earth because we have never experienced a situation when earth did not rotate. Uh, because young people, they have not experienced a situation which was different, so we are, they are not able to see the difference in the things. If the earth stops its rotation, starts moving in the opposite direction, then only we will understand how it feels when the earth rotates. So uh, it's just an example, it's just an analogy of uh, earth rotation, whereas Chesterton is trying to say that it's only when a sharp change comes in a, in a lifetime, one is able to realize, uh, whereas if a person just steps in this world, that is young people, they are living in a world which is moving in a particular direction and that is the, their own experience, that is their own background, so they are not able to realize uh, the sudden changes, the new things uh, around them because they belong to that new generation and they have not been uh, before this change that has uh, happened or before the new things that have come. So uh, that's the advantage of the old people because uh, they were there on this uh, earth before these changes came, so they are, can better understand the difference between the old and the new. So thanks uh, for now. Uh, we'll continue this uh, essay in my next uh, session.